Okay, here's the question again. What is the maximum housing expense for which Joe qualifies if the bank qualifies him using ratio is 28.36, he has annual income of $72,000 and debt of 585 per month? Do you remember what my strategy is, Amanda? Plug stuff in and hope something good happens. Let's try it. Okay, what variable are we looking for? Based on the question, what variable are we looking for? In this case, what's his maximum housing expense? That's what we're looking for. Okay. Now let's look what we have. Bank qualifies him using twenty-eight thirty-six. That's good, right? Plug it in. Plug it in. His annual income is seventy-two k. Now I said it was annual. So what are you going to have to do? Divide by twelve. So if his annual is seventy-two, divide by twelve. Certainly that's going to be six thousand. Gross monthly income of six thousand. And if it's 6,000 here, it's 6,000 down here. Okay? We're looking for housing expense down here. And what's the other variable that we have? 585. 585. All right? Congratulations. You don't have the answer yet, but you do have everything plugged in, right? Okay. Let's do what the T bar tells us to do, and let's see how we do. Okay? Down here, this is very simple. If I'm looking for housing expense, if I multiply the bottom numbers, GMI times ratio, it will give me the housing expense. 6,000 times 28%, somebody help me with that? 16, 16, 8. Okay. Now, stop for just a second. One of the things I'd really like for you to do as you're going over these qualifying problems is just simply ask yourself, what is it that I just found? Who would like to explain to me what you just found? This is the maximum housing. This is the maximum monthly payment he can have, including principal and interest and taxes and insurance, based on his what? Based on his income only. We haven't even looked at his other debt yet, right? Okay. So before we give you an answer to this question, let's go look at how debt affects this as well. Okay. Good news. Plug in. 6,000 times 36% is going to be 2160, I believe. Is that right? Yes. Okay. I need you to stop right here, and I want to tell you the only complicated part of this problem. The only complicated part of this problem. Are you ready, Trevor? Okay, this is complicated, okay? When I multiply the bottom numbers down here and got 2160, what does 2160 equal? It equals everything up top. It equals housing expense and long-term debt. But I didn't ask you what the housing expense and long-term debt is. I asked you what the what was. Housing expense. So I need to isolate the variable of housing expense. I need to make that 585 disappear. How do you make something disappear? You subtract it. And if you subtract it there, you have to subtract it here. Okay? And that number becomes... How much? 1575? 1575. Hold that thought for a second. I'm going to come back and explain that move again. Because historically, I have found that that's the move that if you're going to miss it, that's where you miss it, right there, okay? So if you're perfect on that, don't panic, we're fine. I need to finish this problem off by saying this. <coughs> what was the question? What are we looking for is maximum housing expense. And now you have two answers. You have 1680 or 1575, and you have to go against what your gut is telling you right now. The answer is 1575. Anytime you do a maximum housing expense question, the answer is actually going to be the lower of the two. Think about the inverse relationship. When you're doing a maximum housing expense question, the answer is actually going to be the lesser of the uh, two T bars. I'm sorry, who asked that question? Do we always have to do both of them? Please, until you get a good understanding of this, do both of them. I would not necessarily have to do both of them because there's a trick, but until you see that trick, don't assume the answer is always going to be down here. Linda, there's actually something very important that we learned. And this is once you get there, it'll make you feel better about this. 
The bank would prefer that everybody qualify right here. The fact that you qualified on the back end, do you know what that tells me about this guy? He has too much what? He has too much other debt. If it wasn't for his other debt, he could have afforded more house. But because banks, the bank doesn't believe he's treated his finances appropriately, that's so we'll still give you the money. We're just going to give you less because of the way you've treated your finances. Okay? Now, this is, the, and, and by the way, this is actually the harder of the two problems you're going to see right here before you go. Okay? Maximum housing expense question. The answer is always the lower of the two. I would be shocked if there's not someone out there who doesn't understand that move right there. Now, is there anybody out there who wants to admit they didn't understand that move? Or are you okay with it? Deb? Okay. It's okay. So, well, let me, let me mention this to you as well. Sometimes, I, I would love it for you to understand it logically, okay? But sometimes it's okay to cheat. And here's what I mean by uh, cheat. If you want to write a note to yourself that in a maximum housing expense question, you're always going to subtract the long-term debt on the back end only. Okay, did you hear that comment? In a maximum loan, uh, housing expense question, you will subtract the long-term debt, but only on the back end or the debt ratio, however you want to say it. Tonight when you're doing your homework, I hope that this inherently gets where you understand it. But if it doesn't, you tell yourself that and you will never go wrong. Okay? Questions or comments about qualifying the buyer maximum housing expense question. Okay? Let me do, if we do this, we're actually, we're not ahead, but we're ahead of where I thought I would be today. So let me get this question in. That way on Wednesday morning, I think I'll be able to answer it some of the things you struggle with on homework, okay? The going hand in hand with this question is a minimum income question. The minimum income question goes hand in hand with this. They're both by qualifying uh, questions. <coughs> Lindsay, yeah. if I told you that this was a minimum income question, I want you to look at the uh, board, and as I'm erasing, tell me which variable, which box do you think I'm going to be looking for? If I, if I tell you that this is a minimum income question, which variable will I be looking for? Last one we were looking for housing expense, right? Exactly right. The minute you know it's a minimum income question, you already know which variable that you're looking for. This one right here. Does that make sense? Okay. So in a minimum income question, here's what's going on. The question is, how much must Joe make? How much must Joe make if he has a monthly, if the house has a monthly payment of $1,400? $1,400 is the housing expense. In other words, somebody's already found the house and calculated all this. So it costs $1,400 a month on that house. He has uh, long-term debt. He has a student loan of $120, and he has a car payment of $385. So $120, student loan, student loan, and a car payment of $385. Huh. Okay. Bank qualifies him. Bank to qualify. Using the sale of 2836. Well, to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter what these numbers are. You're not worried about their philosophy. You're worried about just simply plugging things in place and hope something good happens. Are you ready? Okay. What's that? You want to do it? Oh, thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing that up. Amanda brings up the fact that she said, well, what is long-term debt? What is long-term debt? This is our rule in this class. Our rule in this class is 
If it cannot be paid off in six months by making regular monthly payments, then it's long-term debt. If you only have three months left on that car payment, it doesn't even count. It's not long-term debt. But if it exceeds six months, then you have to consider long-term debt. Thank you for that. And I think there's one on your homework where uh, we'll get a chance to talk about that as well. Okay? All right, let's start plugging some stuff in. Hope something good happens. We know that we're looking for the gross monthly income, and we are given the housing expense, right? Fourteen hundred bucks. Are we giving the ratios? Yes. Twenty-eight. Boom. Done. Down here, fourteen hundred bucks. Plus, how much long-term debt? Five hundred five. It's like five hundred five. Since I didn't say any of it was going to be paid off right away, so fourteen hundred plus five hundred five is nineteen hundred five. Long-term debt. I mean, I'm sorry. The ratio is uh, thirty-six percent. Done and done. You are finished with this. Question. All you have to do now is plug in your calculator. What's 1400 divided by 28%? 5,000. 5,000 What is 1905 divided by 36%? 5292. 5292. I don't know if there's any change or not. Yeah, it's 91.6. 5292-ish. All right. Now here comes the question. What is the minimum income, the minimum monthly income that Joe must have to qualify for this. Now here's the secret. If it's the minimum income, it's always going to be the higher of the two. It's the higher of the two. So the answer is going to be 5292. And there's your minimum income question right there. Um, so are you going uh, monthly or annual? What's that? I'm sorry. So you're not going to change it to annual? Okay, on the exam, they will either ask you monthly or annual, so make sure you read closely. The good thing about it is, obviously, if it's annual, you just simply take that number and multiply it by 12. You annualize it. And so if they were to put 52 there and then another number, which would be like, what, 62 or what? 63,500. 62,500. If they were to put that number in there, you would hopefully that would trigger you to realize, oh, go back and read it and find out if they would do monthly or annual. But absolutely. Absolutely, they may ask you to convert it to uh, annual. Now, let me go back and talk to you. Uh, this sounds a little bit weird. It's a minimum income question, but the answer actually is the higher of the two. Let me give you the shortest explanation ever. Have you ever talked to a bank? Banks are notoriously conservative. If they're getting ready to loan you money, would they rather you make less money, or would they rather you make more? Money. Yeah. So you can remember the inverse relationship if you want to, if you want to logic it out. That's why the bank always takes the most conservative uh, position. Okay. At least you can stop at any time now. I'm sorry.